Oh, oh hi. I'm Dr. Gary Gould and I'm just in the studio with this fabulous lighting taking some selfies with this smartphone. But since you're here, since I'm here, since I have the smartphone, why don't I take a few minutes and show you how to use a smart device in a professional way, in a way that you can use it to make some money, to tell a story, to uh, put your stuff online. Because the best camera that you have is the one that you have with you. And most of us nowadays, certainly in North America, have smartphones. And because of that, thousands and millions of people now have cameras every day in their possession but they're not always using it properly. Just watch YouTube and you know what I'm talking about. Sure, there's lots of funny stuff and stuff that you'll watch, but the sound is terrible, the picture is terrible. Uh, no, you watch it anyways, but when you come to pro-level shooting, you want to apply some pro-level tips to make your stuff stand out from the rest. Now, some of the stuff that will make your stuff look different, we're not going to talk about it today. We're not going to talk so much about lighting. That's I did another video about fabulous visuals. Go watch that. I talk about lighting. Just a quick reminder, lighting makes all the difference. If I turn off one of these lights over here, I go from gorgeous and fabulous to horrible and ugly. <laughs> fabulous! So be careful out there. Don't forget the lighting. Watch the shadows on the face. When you're interviewing somebody, put them in a place where the light is on their face, not behind them. Because being a professional doesn't just mean knowing how to work the knobs and buttons, but it also means what? Looking the part. Now, you'll notice my beautiful lab coat with my name on it. Dr. Gary Gould in the lab coat, looking very professional. Now, you might say, why are you wearing that lab coat again? People in lab coats, get more respect. And so I'm going to put my lab coat on to be serious. One of the important things we're going to talk about is sound and audio. Again, you'll notice when I'm doing this, this workshop, I have a, a microphone on, uh, but typically the microphones on these cameras aren't fabulous. Actually, sound is the, in many ways the very most important thing we're going to do because if there's no Are you still watching? Did you check your headphone jack? How many of you look down to say, whoa, did I push the mute button? It's not so much fun to have no sound, is it? On a quick side note, watch your hearing. A lot of these devices, they come with those earbud headphones. In fact, they all do pretty much, right? You put them in your ear, you're on the subway, it's really loud, so you crank the volume. Suddenly, you're damaging your hearing. So when you turn 21, you can't hear anything because you've spent years listening to, to loud music on your iPhone or you're at a concert. So be careful. Watch the volume on these things. Uh, and over-the-ear headphones are better because they isolate you from the outside sound. And that is the end of the public service announcement. But do be careful. Uh, you will need to bring your own headphones when you're shooting with these devices because you want to listen and monitor the sound uh, off of the device. Sound is the most important thing because if there's no sound, you are done. Now, okay. I appreciate if you're shooting a fire, you can still use pictures of that. I also appreciate the fact you might say, but Dr. Gould, Dr. Gould, I watch YouTube all the time and the sound is terrible. Exactly. And the person got 8 million hits. Yeah, I know. But that's because they're snowboarding in New York City behind a Jeep, right? Who wouldn't watch that without any sound, right? Uh, the important things are the visuals. But when we're doing news, it's important to tell people's story. And the way that we get people's story is by asking questions and interviewing them, which involves volume, voice, sound. You ever listen to a presentation at school when somebody's at the front talking, and they're talking like this and you can hardly hear them, and the more of anything involved, and they're just talking really low and you can't hear them and it's like really frustrating? It's really frustrating when you can't hear something, right? Because your brain disconnects. But if I'm talking nice and clear, your brain will engage and say, wow, I get this. In the old days, we had very poor sound, but nowadays everyone's listening with headphones. And so the sound is like right here. You know what it's like? It's like this. It's like I'm in your ear, I'm whispering and it's really weird. But if I'm only on one side of your ear, you're like, whoa, wait a minute, you're only on the left. Wait a minute, now you're only on the right. Very frustrating. That comes later in editing. You want to make sure that you take that the, the sound is on both channels. Because when we use the microphone, typically it may only put it on the one side and you want to make sure you stereo pair that. But that's a thing for another day. So be careful of that. But sound is critical to what we're doing with any device, smartphone, DSLR, pro level camera, sound, 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 sound. Don't forget. If I take the microphone off and put it over there, 
talk over here and say, this is great, I'm going to do the rest of the workshop like this. But if I come over here and put the microphone back on, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Perfect. By the way, the reason I keep looking up is because the monitor's up there. I'm not just, you know, whoo, right? Uh, so let me run through some things with you, some quick tips on how to use the smartphone. So number one, sound. Headphones, look the part, bring the set, bring all the kit, bring all the audio. We're gonna use an external microphone. I'm gonna show you that at the very end because I'm gonna hook that up. Just make sure that when you're shooting, you shoot the right way. So how is the right way? Camera to the left, all right? Lens left, lens left, and lens level. Lens left and level, lens left and level, lens left and level, right? Always this way, horizontal, vertical. <laughs> It's so much easier to hold the device like this, right? But if I record like this, let's do that right now. Oh, this is great. I'm at the concert. It's very comfortable in my hand. I'm practically asleep. It's so comfortable. Uh, the shot, however, when you play it back, is going to have black bars on both sides. How are you watching me right now? Are you holding your phone like this? No, you're holding like this or you are watching on a TV monitor or a screen. But look at your TV. It goes that way, right? If you're taking pictures, go crazy. Do it both ways. Get a variety of images. But if you're doing video, only shoot this way. Don't forget. Very, very important. Not only am I going to shoot this way, I'm going to make sure that I'm always in the highest record setting, the highest resolution. So do go into your settings and make sure that the thing is set to full resolution. But if your phone or whatever device does 4K, you might yeah, I'm not sure I would shoot in 4K because I don't need that much resolution. Um, and it will also fill up your device much faster. It will also slow down your editing because it takes the files bigger. It takes more time to move over. It slows it down. So you still might only shoot in 1080i but, or 1080p or whatever your phone does. But that's your call. But always make sure you're shooting in full HD. One of the things that uh, really kills our resolution is if we zoom in with the digital zoom. There's the wall there. I can zoom in on it. The problem is when I zoom in, the resolution is gone out the window. Total and utter crap, all right? Really grainy. And if I zoom out, the resolution comes back. So how do we work the camera for top resolution? We shoot always in the wide angle, always wide angle. And if I want the close up, so here's the wide angle, I'm gonna shoot hit like this. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six. Let me stand properly. Arms in, I'll show, I showed you this in the other video. Legs are far apart like this, right? And I'm bracing myself nice and steady, nine, eight. And don't talk, when you're recording, don't talk because it'll record onto the camera. So I'm silent and I record it. And then if I want the close-up, I gotta watch this microphone cable. Here's my close-up here. And then I'm gonna record 10 seconds of that. But that's my close-up and this is my wide shot. What is the zoom lens on these cameras? Your movement. You're going to move forward. You're going to move backwards. Move forward for the zoom in. Move backward for the zoom out. That's it. But do get a variety of images. Again, pro-level thinking applied to a consumer product. Shoot variety of shots. Shoot wide shots. Zoom, move it in physically to the close-up. And also keep it steady when you're recording video. So again, you're not going to see what I'm doing here, but arms in. No, it looks terrible. Trap, look at the lighting, awful. See what I mean by lighting? I'm in the lighting spot, and now I'm in the, shad, the shadows. What do you think looks better, right? You decide, right? So there you go, beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna arms in like this, legs nice and far apart. Look at it, it's like aerobics. It's like a, a fitness video now you're watching. I should charge you extra for that. Anyway, so that's how that works. Keep the shot steady, arms in. Oh, and here's another thing I meant, I meant to mention as well uh, about resolution, just going back one step. The best camera is the one in the back. This is your highest resolution camera. The front camera is not as good a resolution as the back camera. But having said that, sometimes I will use the front camera if I'm trying to do, say, a stand-up of myself, because if I'm trying to do a stand-up, right, I, like I'm using that, the monitor up top so I can frame myself up, but normally you, you won't be able to do that. So it's like selfie mode. So I switch it here and then I'm going to find my best side, which is actually this side. I'm going to turn my shoulders. Now, if I shoot the camera like this for the, say I'm doing a stand-up, residents here say that they're disappointed. 
a couple things. My finger's in the shot, so I have to be careful with that. Uh, it's very dangerous. Don't ever do this over an open sewer or an ocean or something. You can drop this quite easily. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat the shot just a little bit. I'm going to show you this video here. I'm going to drop my arm. See what I'm doing with the elbow? I'm dropping the elbow. So rather than a long shot with my elbow and hand in it, I'm going to bend the shot just a little bit like this, and I'm going to talk into it like this. Now, I'm going to use this microphone, so I'll have a mic set up, and I'm going to hold it just out of the frame, and I can see that on that shot. Residents here say they're disappointed with the council's decision, and they plan to appeal next week. For Ryerson News, I'm Gary Gould. Boy, that's fun, right? See, we can all do it. But you see what I'm doing? I'm going to cheat it. I don't want a big weird shoulder. I'm going to kind of cheat it in a little bit, and I'm going to give myself a nice medium close-up. Where's the medium close-up? Right here, armpit. So you're going to cut off Dr. Gary Gould. Boom. You, if you want it to say Dr. Gary Gould, you can put a key up that says Dr. Gary Gould. But um, just remember, best resolution is on this side of the camera, but in a pinch, sometimes I will use this one. When we're shooting, we don't want a lot of fast panning or tilting, and there's a reason for that, not just because we don't like panning or tilting, but um, when you do a fast pan, there's something called a rolling shutter, and it's the way that these devices record the video. So this and DSLRs, they use what's called a CMOS chip, but the CMOS chip is... A, uh, a chip that records from the top of the chip down. That's how it scans it. And if you move it quickly, it doesn't scan the bottom part fast enough. And so it looks like kind of like this. So if I go back and forth, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on this, but maybe on the pedestals. But if I go back and forth quickly, the pedestals will look like they're going like this. And that's because the, the chip, the device that's recording the picture, isn't able to technically record the whole image at the same time. It's, it's lagging. So you just be careful of that. Or if there's lots of high speed, right, motorcycles, that kind of stuff. Again, think ahead. What am I going to shoot if there's lots of action and try to get another camera? Um, but again, I also appreciate you might be somewhere where things are happening and this is the only device you have. Record it. It's not the end of the world. It might look a little laggy, but if it's great footage, it's still great footage, right? Just be careful with that. Uh, another couple things, I just go through these sort of in order, is um, this is also defaults to autofocus. When I'm shooting video, that might be fine, okay. At first, I'm shooting somebody over there at a parade. Well, then somebody walks through, and the camera will change both auto-focus and auto-exposure to my hand. So now the focus, rather than being in the background, is now up in the, in the foreground, and so the focus is going to pull and change. And then when that person walks through, then the person in the background, my subject, will then refocus, which will look amateur. Manual focus is your friend, and a lot of the smartphones now too, both Android and, uh, I don't know about the Apples, but there, a lot of them are putting in more um, uh, camera features, more manual features, override features as well. And if you're a photographer, you'll appreciate that, so you can over, override all kinds of stuff. Again, we don't like the digital zoom, so don't use that. Don't use any effects, no filters, no black and white. Shoot it straight up color. If you want to use an effect, you can put it on later. But especially with uh, photojournalism and video, we want it to be straight clean, just how you shot it. Now you can tweak it later if the color's wrong, if the, you shot it with the wrong white balance or whatever, then that's something you certainly can fix. But don't add anything onto the phone. Uh, keep the little uh, lens clean, okay. and so make sure you clean out the lens. Uh, don't ever blow on anything electronic. <sighs> Right, like, let me show you on this lens um, right here. So this, uh, there's a camera here, and then there's a piece of glass for the teleprompter. So I'm going to blow on the glass. <sighs> can you see anything? <sighs> yeah, you can see my breath. Uh, gross. That's disgusting, right? I just blew in your face. Sorry about that. But I want you to see when you breathe out, you, you, um, moisture comes out with it. And if you breathe onto the lens here or onto your DSLR, that breath vapor, that moisture vapor is going to go inside and can get inside the lens and can give you all kinds of problems. That's fine if you're cleaning your glasses. <sighs> okay, great, no problem. But nothing electronic. Well, how do I do, how, what do I do then, Gary? So a couple things, you can get yourself a lens cleaning kit. Don't ever put lens cleaning fluid directly onto the lens of any camera, sometimes because it comes with liquid if you buy a kit. So you don't want to be dripping it. You want to put it onto the lens cleaning cloth and then gently wipe it onto the lens. So keep it clean. Uh, other thing too is when you're shooting, make sure there's enough memory on these devices. What's the weak part with all of these? 
the battery, right? The battery, the battery, the battery, the battery. So a couple quick tips about that. Please make sure that first of all, you charge the battery, charge it up fully. Make sure this thing is fully charged. The other thing that you may not know about rechargeable battery technology is when the batteries get cold, they die, right? They deflate. Keep it in the inside pocket of your, of your jacket or somewhere that's warm so that the body heat is keeping the phone or your battery warm so when you get to where you're going, you're taking pictures. If I'm out or video, cold air kills the battery much faster. The other thing is if there's any kind of alert going off, like as I've been doing this workshop, I have uh, three missed calls and nine new emails, right? That's just in the course of the the three hours I've been taking to do this. But I've silenced my phone, so when I'm doing this, it's not ringing and beeping while we're doing this video, right? That's just pro-level thinking. So <laughs> someone is looking for me. A couple other just real quick things. The, the flash on these cameras are, is pretty bad, right? So it's, it's quite blinding. Basically, I'm gonna take a white piece of Kleenex, I'm gonna cover up the flash on the, on the device, and then when I take the picture, it's going to soften it up. Now you can't really see because I have so much studio light on it, but that's going to soften up the flash and it's going to be fantastic. If you watch the other video I showed you when I do talk about some smartphone recording, uh, turning on the light is actually quite a good thing uh, because it does put a nice little uh, light in the person's eyes. Or <clears throat> that's another reason if I'm shooting with the iPod, right, I can use the flashlight the feature on my camera and uh, I can use um, right here. So I'm, I'm lighting the, the subject with, with this light and I can go a little bit higher so that it's, it's offset a little bit. Again, you can't really tell from this light because I got so much light going here. But uh, what I would do is use one to light the subject and the other one to record it just to make it just a little bit more professional. Don't forget, all right? So don't forget lighting, don't forget sound. Hold it level. Watch out for lots of action. Be careful. Beware the rolling shutter. Beware the rolling shutter. So there you go. Ten minutes or less. How to use a smartphone for pro level stuff. Do try it out in advance so you know what uh, what your phone is capable of and not capable of, and um, have some fun with it. But uh, don't forget horizontal lens left. I'm Dr. Gary Gould. We'll see you again.